I think this would be a good lesson to watch a few times. That's one of the more math-oriented parts of uh, macro. And uh, it's about calculating real GDP using the price index and nominal GDP. So the, the main formula, and this isn't just for GDP, it could be for wages, it could be calculating movie revenues, uh, comparing Gone with the Wind to Sound of Music to Avatar to Avengers Endgame. And it's real GDP equals nominal GDP divided by the deflator, okay? So, as we know, economists are lazy and don't want to deal with decimal points, so we don't want to call the price index 1.5, we want to call it 150, so that people think you multiply something times 150, or divide. We don't do that, but there's a base year, and we're going to use the year 2000 as our base year. You can pick any base, any year is a base year. This is obviously a common one. And that price index is 100, okay? And the deflator for that is 1.0, one being the identity number. When you multiply or divide by it, you get the same number. So if we did the base year real GDP, we would get the nominal GDP, which is gonna be 12 trillion here, divided by one, which is gonna be 12 trillion. Okay, so in the base year, Merry Christmas, your nominal GDP and real GDP are always going to be the same just for the base year. For the other ones, we got to calculate the def deflator. Have no fear. It's pretty easy. Just move the decimal place two places. So this one would be 1.5. All right, this one, 140, would be 1.4. If you want, throw another zero on there. Um, now this one, don't get tripped up. It's not 0.06, okay? It's not six, it's 0.6, okay? I'm gonna put 0.60 in there, all right? So those are our deflators. And then calculating, we've done the hard part, okay? We're gonna calculate doing this division, so don't worry, I set up the math so things divide nicely. 22.5 trillion, divided by 1.5, my real GDP here is gonna be uh, 15 trillion, okay? No, that's less, which is why we call the deflator the deflator. In general, it tends to make things smaller, but not always. Now look, 2015, these aren't actual numbers, by the way but gets the point across. The price index is lower, right? Okay, things cost less. And the nominal GDP is lower. But if we do 21 uh, divided by 1.4, we get also 15 trillion. Okay, so really these two years were the same as far as real output different nominal GDPs, but I'm trying to express the point of real takes into account the price level changes, and 2015 is just as productive of a year on a dollar for dollar basis as uh, 2020 was, okay? As we said, the thank you, uh, real and nominal GDP are the same for the base year, but 12 trillion divided by one is 12 trillion. Let's go into the past, okay? Uh, again, these aren't actual numbers, but the numbers uh, are gonna go below 100 here, okay? So when the numbers get below 100, the deflator becomes an inflator, uh, Tom Brady. Uh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It's deflate gate, not inflate gate. See, I can't even tell a joke. There you go. The whole lesson's about Tom Brady. Someday I'll be giving a lesson talking about how he used to be a great quarterback. So why don't you retire Tom Brady so I can have the Browns and the Bears do something? Okay, here come the Browns. 
but here it's going to be a deflator, I'm sorry, an inflator, 3.6 divided by 0.6 is going to give me 6 trillion, okay? All right, so this 3.6, and when we compare it to the year 2000, it's still less, but it's Six trillion is much closer to 12 trillion than 3.6 trillion. Okay, uh, before we close it up here, I want to talk about 1979-1980, and these are, for the most part, actual numbers. Uh, 1979, the nominal GDP was 2.63. Okay. All right. And 1980, the nominal GDP was 2.86 trillion, okay? Well, inflation was about 10% between 1979, 1980, maybe even a little bit higher. Uh, so I'm gonna just make 1979 my base year, okay? Uh, not, no, it's okay, we'll make it a little bit funkier. We'll say that the price index here is 80%, which is 0.8, right? And then if it's 10% inflation year over year, this one would be 0.88, okay? Well, the real GDP for 1979 is 2.63 divided by 0.8 which is 3.28 trillion, okay. Now the point of doing this is there's a pretty significant increase in nominal GDP year over year, but when we take into account the inflation, 2.86 divided by 0.88, this is real GDP of 3.25 trillion in 1980. So from 1979 to 1980, because of inflation, our economy shrunk. And that's really what's important to understand about this lesson, okay? That inflation can take away so much growth uh, just by price level changes going up so much. Okay, it hasn't been a huge problem for 40 years, okay, but it could emerge as a problem again. And uh, it's as devastating as a recession can be. And unlike a recession, inflation tends to feed off of itself and get worse and worse and worse. Okay, so the 70s, we could not stop inflation until Paul Volcker had extreme contractionary monetary policy raised interest rates super high to finally put an end to it in 1981, 1982. Okay, all right. Price index, deflator, nominal GDP, and then real GDP is the nominal divided by the deflator. Okay, as we go into the past, past the base year, the numbers going below 100 when we divide by those, the real GDP will actually be greater than the nominal GDP. Oh, sorry, I went over eight minutes.